We welcome all of you here tonight in the name of the Lord <coughs> and those who have joined us in live stream also we're thankful for you. This will be our 51st installment in the book of Amos. We're nearing the close of this book. I have spent some time we did deliberate time concerning what uh, what I wanted to cover next. I think I have decided uh, the immediate book that we'll peruse will be Jude after this, and then I'm going to commence with the Gospel of John, Amen. which will occupy some considerable time, but. These are not like just favorite book selections, you understand. I feel as though these are appropriate. Jude is an appropriate follow-up to, to Amos, and then we'll be ready to have a, a grand overview of redemption in Christ Jesus and the identity of Christ and, you know, things of that sort. <clears throat> We're going to be in the ninth chapter tonight, verses 2 through 4. And I wanted to say a few introductory words before I begin. From one point of view, these are hard texts. They're speaking about the wrath of God and his indignation. But I did want to underscore that this is not a different God. Amen. This is the God we serve, we're reading about. But okay. this is how God reacts to religious hypocrisy. Amen. And he still does. Amen. The only difference between Israel of old and the church today, the only difference is that one is in Christ and one was not. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And the reason that there's a difference in Christ is not just like a legal difference. Mm -hmm or a technical difference is because Christ has so satisfied God in regards to sin that God is now justified in recreating yeah. men. Yeah. If it wasn't for that, we'd never get beyond the book of Amos. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Now, it's important to keep that in mind. We can't say, well, the poor Israelites couldn't do better. Don't say that because God, they could have done better. Yes. They couldn't do what we do in Christ, but they could have done better. There were men and women who lived under the law who did better. Mm -hmm. And uh, David comes to mind and the prophets and mm -hmm. Zechariah and, El and Elizabeth and John the Baptist. Yeah. Tonight we're going to consider how you can't hide from God. Now the, po the potency of unbelief, which is itself quite a subject to explore, the potency of unbelief is seen in the, in the inveterate tendency of unbelievers to ignore God's threats and promises. See, that tells you something about unbelief, what unbelief does to a heart. God can speak in a way that scares a, scare a believer, scare, frighten them. And, but unbelief just, just kind of doesn't affect the unbelief that way. Faith always acts. When there's an arresting word from heaven, if it's a threat, they adjust their conduct. If it's a promise, they seek to appropriate. Faith always does that. I want to underscore that. Faith yeah. always does that. Unbelief is what causes people not to heed it. So when people are retarded in their responses, it's because they don't believe. Yeah. Amen. If they say they believe, they've just been deceived. They don't believe. This is what faith does. Yes. Yeah. It doesn't make any difference whether it's faith in Abraham 
or faith in David, or faith in Zacharias and Elizabeth, or faith in Paul, or faith in Timothy. Mm -hmm. Faith always responds favorably yeah. and instantly Amen. to a word from God. Mm -hmm. uh, having uh, thought about that, you can see how unbelief is <laughs> running rampant in the land. <coughs> For instance, those on the day of Pentecost, these were people among whom were people that actually called for the crucifixion of Christ. Mm -hmm. They actually demanded it, went along with the Pharisees yeah. and Sadducees, and these very people, when they heard the word of God, they received the word with gladness and were baptized uh -huh. immediately. Yeah, amen. They didn't go home and think about it. See, faith uh -huh. responds mm -hmm. immediately. Amen. That's a trait of faith. Mm -hmm. Unbelief never responds yeah. favorably. Mm -hmm. It is ever true that those who have acted upon the word of God have believed. Mm -hmm. Those who have not acted upon the word of God have not believed. Yeah, Our text in addressing Israel as a whole it's because as a whole, they had not acted upon the word of God. There may have been here and there a remnant. Mm -hmm. Apparently, it was, it was very small, apparently. Mm -hmm. But as a whole, they had not responded to divine overtures, even though they were frequent and rather large. Yeah. He sent prophets in a timely manner mm -hmm. in order to, to arrest their yeah. wayward walk. And they just stubbornly refused mm -hmm. to give heed to it. How wrong were they? This nation who was once delivered from Egypt and drank water out of a rock and ate manna from heaven. How wrong were they to experience the parting of the Red Sea? How wrong were they? They were so wrong that God rejected this generation. Yes, amen. Just as surely as he rejected that entire generation of Israel, the mm -hmm. entire generation of men mm -hmm. from 20 years and upward, an entire generation was rejected because they believed a word of 10. Yeah. Uh -huh. 10. Yeah. They believed a word of 10 men mm -hmm. and 601,560 men were excluded yes. from Canaan. Right. Ten men. Uh -huh. Well, there's a lot more than ten men today, yes. let me tell you. Amen. Now, these words, such as we're reading tonight, these have been written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. It's 1 Corinthians 10, 11. You, you mentioned this before, that he sent prophets in a timely manner. I was considering that. In other words, he said that if they would have listened, That's it right. could have been arrested. That's right. Their unbelief could have been changed right. to belief, but they would not. They would not. This is why it's imperative that truth be preached. Yes, amen. Doesn't make any difference whether people want to hear it or not. That is entire. That doesn't have anything at all to hear to have to do with this at all. The word of truth has to be spoken, because that's the thing that's going to determine the state and destiny of these people. Now these things are written for our admonition, note these words, 1 Corinthians 10, 11, upon whom the ends, the ends of the world are come. In other words, all the evidence is in. Yeah, amen, that's right. There's not going to be any more. God's not going to raise up another nation to especially demonstrate how he is. He raised up one, only one. He's not raising up another. Not like Israel. So it's the ends of the world. The testimony is finished. Someone once said that the, the mills of Revelation cease to grind on the Isle of Patmos. Yes, yes. That was it. Amen. Yeah. God's not going to work any other wonder mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. 
to try and convince people. Right. Not going to raise up any other nation to use them as a sort as a holy experiment to show people mm -hmm. how destitute people are because of unbelief. He's raised up one nation, Israel. Yeah. If you don't pay attention to the, if you don't pay attention to that, God's not going to give you anything else. Mm -hmm. People's got to get this down in their soul. That's the, that's, they were written for our admonition. This is how God reacts when he speaks to people and they don't listen. By the same token, in the old record, there are examples of how he reacts and people do listen. If what has been written is not sufficient to induce sobriety, and godly response, then nothing more will be done to convince men. Uh -huh. yes. I'm telling you the truth. Nothing more will be done. There's not going to be any great miracle in the sky to convince people. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not going to happen. It's already been. That's why this has got to be declared. Why do you think Satan has led people to shut up mm -hmm. yeah. the old scriptures? Yeah. And that a wave of remarkable inexcusable ignorance of Genesis through, through Malachi exists in the contemporary church. It's almost as though they don't know anything at all about it. Why do you think Satan's done that? See, he's, ta he's caused the evidence for, how, for God's nature and how he responds. He's taken it away from people. And they were glad to have it so. And for the primary evidence that God has of course, it's his son, Jesus Christ, and he has withdrawn that evidence. Yeah, yeah. Jesus isn't here. He's in heaven. Mm -hmm. Jesus has withdrawn the yeah, primary right. evidence. So if you don't believe the testimony, <laughs> there isn't anything else. Faith rests on testimony. Amen. So the power that affects salvation is now a message, mm -hmm. not a sign, not a wonder, a message, a message. Yeah. The gospel's the, not a, the power of God unto salvation. Now, having said that, let's begin this uh, review of verses 2 through 4. Though they dig into hell, thence shall my hand take them. Though they climb up into heaven, thence will I bring them down. And though they hide themselves in the top of Carmel, I will search and take them out thence. And though they be hid from my sight in the bottom of the sea, thence I will command the serpent, and he shall bite them. And though they go into captivity before their enemies, thence will I command the sword, and it shall slay them, and I will set mine eyes upon them for evil and not for good. Now, Amos did not enjoy delivering this message, but it had to be delivered. God will find you. Now, if you're a sensitive person, I'm banking on that being so, at some time in your life, God has reminded you of things you did in the past, yeah. and you found out. They can't hide from God. Right. You may have hid this thing from everybody. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. right. There may not be a living person that knew you did this or did that, yeah. but God will find you. That's right. mm -hmm. Hold it out before you. Now, in Christ, that's an opportunity to repent and yes. recover. Mm -hmm. Though they dig into hell, thence... <laughs> See, this is the language of hopelessness. That's what this is. A, this is a hope, describes a hopeless condition. Man is not capable of coming up with a way of avoiding divine reprisals. Can't, can't do it. Can't escape the convicting presence of God. You already know that by experience. Surely, surely you know that by experience. David wrote of the arresting presence of the Lord. He couldn't escape it. Here's what he said. Psalm 139, 3 through 5. O Lord, 
Thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my downsitting, my uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassest my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. For there's not a word in my tongue. But lo, O Lord, thou knowest it all together. Thou hast beset me behind and before and laid thine hand upon me. Amen. He, he recognized that. Now, whatever clouds that to you, you got to make war on. You've got to get rid of any influence or anything or any friends that cloud that truth to you. You know all about me, Lord, when I'm sitting down, lying down, standing up, talking, whatever I'm doing, you know everything about me. And that is a sobering contemplation. The fact of which David was cognizant is that God knew everything about him, within and without his thoughts and his deeds. Amen. He knew them all. You'd be ashamed if we knew your thoughts, some of them. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You give might have an occasion to I thank God that that didn't get out. Yeah. 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 But God knew it. Uh -huh. And he expected you to cast it down. Yeah, that's right. Then he won't, if, you, if you do, then he won't remember it. Amen. You won't either. You remember when David committed that sin with Bathsheba? God found him. It looked like it was well hidden, didn't it? Nobody else knew about it, but him and Bathsheba, God found him. He searched him out, found him, said, Thou art the man, and David received it, and he agreed to, to settle for what God said he was going to do because David committed that sin. He, he, put it, he, he forgave him, mm -hmm. but there were some things he was going to do because he committed them. Here's, uh, here's some of them. First of all, he said, the sword will not depart from your house. You're going to have trouble in your family. Second, evil would raise up against him out of his own house. Namely, Absalom. Mm -hmm. Some of his own children. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. See, would God do something like that? Well, <laughs> that's what he said. That's right. Yes, God will do something like that. You mess around with God, he'll turn your own family against yeah. you. Uh -huh. That's right, he will. Three, he would take David's wives and give them to somebody else. Yep. That's what he said. Now, I'm going to take your wives. I'm going to give them to somebody else. They'll lie with him. Four, David had sinned secretly, but God would punish him openly. <laughs> unlike Israel, uh, unlike David, Israel had not profited from God's punishments. So the Lord knows they were punished. Some of them, the tens of thousands died at one time. You know, it was plagues and pestilences and defeat and war and diseases and famines. And but they didn't respond like David. David, David didn't say, oh, no, Lord, please don't do that. He gritted his teeth, so to speak, and settled for God, what God said he was going to do. But Israel didn't. That's my, yeah. uh -huh. that's my point. Though they dig into hell, though they dig into hell, then shall my hand take them. The other versions say they dig down into Sheol, dig down to the depths of the grave. It's the NIV. Basic Bible English says go deep into the underworld. The Jewish Bible says, dig into the nether world, burrow into Sheol, that's the New Jerusalem Bible, dig down to the place of the dead, it's a New Living Translation, buried in Hades, 
It's another Jewish Bible. Dig deep into the earth. That's a contemporary English version. Dig deep into the ground, the English Revised Version. Dig their way down to the world of the dead. That's a good news Bible. And dig into Sheol, Hades, the dark abode of the gathered dead. The Amplified. <laughs> now this is doubtless reference to the place of the dead. which is signified by the word Sheol in Hebrew and Hades in the New Covenant Scriptures. Hades, abode of the dead. The King James Version translates it hell. That's not like a fire hell. It's like we don't know much about it, but it's an unseen place. So the word English word hell, the English word hell does mean that, as well as lake of fire. It has two different meanings. You know, the, the hope of many of the wicked is that when they die, it's all over. Yeah. That's right, what this yeah. is saying, that even death can't That's right. cover you. That's uh -huh. what he's saying. Yeah. Amen. Uh -huh. Keep in mind that prior to Christ, there was very, 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 very little known about life after death. Hardly anything. Life and immortality were brought to light by the gospel. Yeah. For instance, Solomon wrote, The dead know not anything, neither have they any more a reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Ecclesiastes 9.5 Again he said, There is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. Ecclesiastes 9.10 Job said, But man dieth and wasteth away, yea, man giveth up the ghost, and where is he? Job 14.10 David wrote, For in death there is no remembrance of thee, in the grave who shall give thee thanks? Psalm 6.5 And Isaiah wrote, For the grave cannot praise thee, death cannot celebrate thee, they that go down into the pit cannot hope for thy truth. Isaiah 38.18 What does all that tell you? There wasn't much revealed. Yeah about life after death. Now there are people today, soul sleeping people, that use those texts to prove their doctrine. They're going back to a time of ignorance. God had not opened up the state of the dead. Some people had like a intuitive sense, but they, they did, hardly anybody knew anything of concrete about life after death. It just had not been, been known. When it says go down into hell, it's speaking about go down, you go down where the dead people are, where all activity ceases and we're safe at last and we're away from trouble at last. See, if, they, if they do that, I'll, I'll reach down and pull them up. Yeah. I'll not be safe. Sinners thought, of it as an escape from the voice of the Lord. And yeah. anyone who commits suicide thinks the same thing. Right. They yeah. think that death is like a getaway. Yeah. But it's not a getaway right. at all. Whither shall I go from thy spirit, David reasoned, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. Mm -hmm. So he kind of sensed yeah, it, yeah. that there is no escape from God. So see, some people try and escape from God with a bottle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some people try to escape from God by illicit fornication and adultery, yeah. Yeah. sexual activity. Some try and escape from God by involvement in entertainment and other things. They're trying to get away mm -hmm. from this gnawing of the conscience. But God won't let them get away. Amen. My hand will take them. <laughs> no, no, no inhibition here. I'll just reach. Where about? I'll just, yeah. I'll just reach down, take them. The Lord would apprehend them and punish them, just as He said. It's not going to be hard to find them. In other words, yeah. you think you run away from me? Get away from me. Drown yourself in the affairs of the world. Get inebriated. Get intoxicated with pleasure. You think because you forgot, God says, that I forgot. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
No, I didn't. My hand will take them. Though they climb into heaven, <laughs> that's not the throne of God heaven, it's the heavens. The guy there, I get out of sight, just that's what Satan thought. I'll ascend up above the stars. I'll, I'll get up there. There's no safety zone for those God's going to punish. Yes. Yeah, he said, God's not up here, but he lied. <laughs> he lied. Yeah. He lied. He was blind. Yeah. Yeah, somebody said if you just take that suit off, you'd, you'd find him, right? Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> the psalmist said, if I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. Can't, can't get away. God said through Obadiah. I always like to have something, know what something Obadiah said. He said, Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence I will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. So yeah, you may think if I can get to be president, yeah. then I'll be invincible. You can't get so high, God can't pull you down. That's what he's telling them. Yeah. Now there's something to be learned here. There's something of great value to be learned by us, in fact, in this text. When we have displeased the Lord, or we've walked in our own willful way, there is no way to escape the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. He'll come at you when you're asleep. Uh -huh. He'll come at you when you're eating. He'll come at you when you're working. And it'll be said of you, it's hard to kick against the pricks. Yes, amen. Mm. Yeah, that's God. We're talking about God now. Uh, yeah. I know you've experienced this. This is an experience of people that follow Christ. They've grown, may perhaps grown beyond have, trying to hide, but it's amazing. After I was 75 years old, I remembered some things I did when I was like 15. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had forgotten about them. And I wasn't sure whether I ever really repented of them. Mm -hmm. So I repented of them then. Yeah. That's what you do. Amen. That's what you do. When, someone, when God dredges up your past, uh -huh. the only reason he has mm -hmm. is so you'll be forgiven. Yes, yes, amen. So you'll you'll take note of it, confess it to God, and be forgiven. That's the reason he dredges it up. Yes. He, but, but see, with Israel, they got to a point where it, that wasn't why he was dredging it up. He was dredging it up to punish them. Yeah. So they know they had displeased him. You know, Judas, he betrayed the Lord for 30 pieces of silver, but God found him. God found him. He got so smitten, he hung himself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No matter where he went, he could go into the temple. Yeah. He could go eat the Last Supper with the apostles and with Jesus. Mm -hmm. but God found him. God searched him out. Mm -hmm. You know how God can uh, do that. Now, a little further. Though they hide themselves in the top of Carmel, I will search and take them from thence. And though they be hidden from my sight in the bottom of the sea, thence will I command the serpent, and he shall bite them. See, I said that this is a language of hopelessness. I'm not going to change my mind on this. That's what God is saying. I'm not going to change my mind on this. And you are not able to escape what I have determined I'm going to do. Lord continues with the strong and convicting affirmation that there's no way out. Now believe me when I tell you, the wicked need to be told this. Yes, amen. You may say, well, what good will it be? Well, that's not the way they reason here. Uh -huh. He'd know, he'd, he'd, Amos knew this wasn't going to do any good. Uh -huh. But tell them anyway. Yes. Tell these people that insist on living in the flesh they insist on doing it, say, God's going to find you out. Right. You can't escape it. Be sure your sins will find you out. Grind it into their minds. Yes. So if it ever happens, they'll remember. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Don't be afraid to do it. Yeah. 
Don't think you're intruding on people's conscience. They're intruding on God yes. by sinning right which squarely in his face. Yes, amen. Tell them about it. Yeah. You're, you're not getting by with this. Mm -hmm. Be convinced of it yourself now. You have to say it in a convicting manner. You're not getting by with this. Your sins, God's going to find them out. You've sown to the wind. You're going to reap the whirlwind. Amen. What you get back is going to be a lot worse than what you did. Amen. Amen. That's right. On though you hide at the top of Carmel, that's Mount Carmel. Uh -huh. Some versions say the summit of Carmel. <laughs> Mount Carmel, that's where Elijah challenged the prophets of Baal, you remember? Uh -huh. That was Mount Carmel, uh -huh. where that great victory was wrought. In the opening words of Amos' prophecy, he said, the top of Carmel shall wither. <laughs> it won't be a place of safety. See, it was considered a high and safe place where munitions could be maintained. There'd be no hiding place, even though for a considerable amount of his history, Mount Carmel was noted for a, for a haven and a place of safety. It would give the people no advantage to climb up to the top of Mount Carmel. Maybe they could rehearse how Elijah killed a prophet of Baal there and how God had wrought many things there. And, but there'd be no divine benefit realized even in Carmel. Yeah. Maybe they think if I just go to church, you know, let's bring it up to date. Yeah. Uh -huh. If I go to church and I make some, uh, maybe I'll start tithing again. And I'll, uh, I'm going to watch my speech a little better. That's climbing up to Mount Carmel. Yeah, that's right. you know, God, God said, no, you're not going to get away. Satan learned this. He climbed up. Yeah. Satan found, God found him, drug, drug him out of Mount, the top places. Uh -huh. Adam and Eve, they found it out. Yeah. Hmm? They climbed up, thought they were going to do what God, God just found him and yeah. pulled him down. There's no divine benefit to be realized when you've provoked God beyond his tolerance. Yes. And he's the one that defines that. Mm -hmm. There's no way to avoid the penalty. Mm -hmm. There can come a time when an attempt to recover previous blessings cannot be done. Mm -hmm. I've known people like this. They once walked at least higher than they are now. Mm -hmm. And the devil deceived them and they fell. I think they made a hearty effort to try and recover themselves, but they couldn't. Mm -hmm. yeah. God never gave them to repent. Mm -hmm. They couldn't recover from the snare of the devil yeah. because they crossed this uh -huh. yeah. invisible line yeah. mm -hmm. of demarcation. So there can come a time when you can't, when it's impossible mm -hmm. to renew the person to repentance. Right. That time can come. I don't know when it is. I don't want to know when it is. I just want to avoid it. Amen. That's the word we have to people. Avoid this yeah. avoid this situation. Where it becomes impossible to renew them to begin to repent it. You can preach it. You can pray it. You can testify. No repentance. Yeah. It's like God said to Jeremiah, don't pray for this people. Yeah. I won't hear you. And if they pray, I won't hear them. What happened? They crossed that, they crossed that line. And he goes on, though they went to the bottom of the sea. You, they say, hid from my sight in the bottom of the sea. Well, that's down there. The average depth of the sea is 2.65 miles. That's the average depth. Deepest part of the sea is just shy, shy of seven miles. That's deep. Yeah. You go down to the deepest part of the ocean floor, surely I'll be safe down here. He says, I'll find you. I'll find you down there. One time the psalmist said, the Lord said, I will bring again from Bashan, I will bring my people again from the depths of the sea. But that's not what he said in this skipper. 
That's not what he said here. Another time Isaiah said in Isaiah 51 9, he made the depths of the he made the depths of the sea a way for a ransom to pass over. See? As that's not here. God can go to the depths of the sea can be a way out. Not here. Not here. Micah said, He will turn again and will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities, and thou shalt cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. But, but not here. Not in this case. Instead, the bottom of the sea, when at the bottom of the sea, God will command the sea serpent to bite him. There are certain enemies at the bottom of the sea. See, people forget they're trying to escape to the unknown places, and they forget there's other occupants in these unknown places. I'll command the serpent, and a serpent will bite him. See, should men choose to remember all t at all times that the Lord sees them, they'll be safe. They'll be safe. Amen. They may not be able to explain it, mm -hmm. but they believe that, and they remember that. The eyes of the Lord are upon me. Mm -hmm. The Lord knows when I sit down, the Lord knows when I get up, the Lord knows when I lay down, the Lord knows what I say. Mm -hmm. You keep that in your mind, you'll be safe. Mm -hmm. That'll protect you. Yeah. Why? Because the fear of the Lord, yeah. which that will induce, the fear of the Lord is, from one point of view, is knowing He's right there. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil and pride, arrogancy, and the evil way. See, the fear of God will teach you to avoid what God hates. Yep. Amen. And the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence in the fear of the Lord. Proverbs 14, 26 says, so armed with the fear of the Lord and confidence, you won't be in this situation mm -hmm. where you can't hide from God. You won't want to hide from God. Yeah, that's right. You want to come up before His face. This is what faith does. Faith seeks out the presence of the Lord. It doesn't seek to retreat uh -huh. from God. It seeks to come near. Amen. Yes. Um, I'm mindful of Jonah in this also. He, yeah. he tried to escape from God. God sent a whale. That's in, right. In the belly of a whale in the ocean, God found him. In the depths. In the depths, <laughs> yeah. In the depths, as soon as the Lord, he joins the salvations of the Lord, that the Lord spoke to the fish up to the top. God prepared the fish. Uh -huh. That's right, he prepared the fish. Prepared the storm, prepared the fish, yeah. prepared the gourd. <laughs> That's not all. He said, I'll command the sword. And it shall slay them. Moses told the people of this kind of condition way back at the beginning. It's, it's, a, it's amazing how much of this got Moses revealed. Way back at the beginning, he revealed this to Moses. I will scatter you among the heathen and will draw out the sword after you. It's Leviticus 26, 33. So way back at the beginning, God speaking through Moses said, look, I'll bring out the sled. That's a military. That's a militia. Mm -hmm. yeah. Death by a sword. Metal sword. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll do that. I'll command the sword. I'll command it. Is I'll direct the sword toward you like I directed your swords against your enemies. Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jeremiah said much the same thing. He said, I will scatter them also among the heathen and Neither they nor their father, which they, neither they or their fathers have known as strange nations. I will send a sword after them till I have consumed them. Jeremiah nine, sixteen. Ezekiel he he said the same thing. I'll punish them. The young men shall die by the sword. Or Jeremiah. Ezekiel said, and a third part thou shalt scatter in the wind, and I will draw out a sword after them. See, I'll see. I'll enable their enemies to hunt them down. Yeah. You'll know, find them. Now this, uh, this all this speaks of a withdrawal of mercy. As you could uh -huh. yeah. say, God has everlasting mercy. Uh -huh. 
Well, his mercy does endure forever, but not toward the people all the time. There comes a time he has withdrawn mercy. That's what this is talking about. No mercy. I'm going to just open the door. I'm going to make you vulnerable. I'm going to make you vulnerable. Vulnerable. So all your enemies have access to you. The ground won't yield anything to you. The sky won't yield anything to you. Nothing will go for good for you. I'll be against you. Your enemies, they'll find you, and I'll command the sword. They'll be able to access you and, and take your life. It's a sad, those are fearful words. It would be correct to say that God's mercy is unending. It doesn't change. But those who reject him will not partake of it. It's only those who please him who will partake of it. Yeah, well, yeah, it's unending because he's unending, yeah. Yeah. But in his application, there comes an end, there will be no mercy toward the person. I say that because sometimes when we make modifying statements, it, it neutralizes the potency of the, of the word. God says, I'll not have mercy. That doesn't mean he's not merciful. It does mean he's not merciful to them. And that's what we want to avoid, of course. I'll set my eyes upon them for evil. Oh, that's a... oh Lord, deliver us from that. Amen. I'll set mine eyes on them for evil. Other versions say for harm. I'll set my eyes on them for harm. I'll bring disaster on them. They will experience disaster. Living Bible says, I will see to it that they receive evil. Contemporary English Bible says, I'm determined to hurt them. The English Revised Version said, I'll watch for ways to give them trouble. Good News Bible says, I'm determined to destroy them. The inter International Standard Version says, I'll fix my gaze on them to inflict disaster. Message Bible says, I've made up my mind to hurt them. Does that sound like God? Well, this isn't God when you're in Christ Jesus, but this is God. Yeah, amen. This is the real God. Uh -huh. it shows us how dangerous it is, it is to provoke God. See, it shows how amen. dangerous. Yeah, what are you going to do if God's seeking for an opportunity to do you evil? What, pray tell, can you do to avoid that? Now, this isn't how your life in Christ starts out. Uh -huh, yeah. In Christ, God isn't, God's seeking to do you good. Uh -huh. See, but if that's rejected, and if the person insists on doing things that are provocative to God, uh -huh. then he seeks opportunities to hurt them, yeah. do evil to them. In other words, for, other, for the earth to be against them, like the earth wouldn't bring forth fruit for Esau wouldn't yield any crop to him. You'd be a vagabond. The earth won't. That's the kind of thing happened here. Everything was against them. When speaking of Israel being scattered among the nations, Moses said this, Among these nations shalt thou find no ease, neither shall the sole of thy feet have rest. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart and failing eyes and sorrow of mind. Mm -hmm. Now listen, I, I know people I think that's happened to. Uh -huh. I know people I think that's happened to. Their life is just plain miserable. Yeah. Uh -huh. Why is it? You take the people of God, they can be in miserable circumstances, but they themselves aren't miserable. Uh -huh. yeah. See? They can have peace in the midst of a storm. Mm -hmm. They can be content in whatever state they're in. Mm -hmm. When they're weak, they can be strong, yeah. see? But for those who agitate God and provoke God, even in their captivity, mm -hmm. boy, think, let's think again what he said. Yeah. No ease. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. No ease. Mm -hmm. The sole of the foot will not have rest. 
They'll have a trembling heart, afraid of everything all the time, scared all the time. Yeah. And failing of eyes, won't be able to see it coming, be broadsided every time. Mm -hmm. And sorrow of mind. Can God, will God give somebody that? Well, mm -hmm. that's what he said. Now remember, he had tolerated them for some several centuries. Mm -hmm. This wasn't something, well, a decision that was made in seven, eight, nine, ten days. Right. Yeah. There have been centuries. Mm -hmm. Centuries in which the prophets came faithfully, yeah, told right. her, repent and turn back yeah. now. You're on the wrong course now. Yeah. There was chastisements where thousands of them would die in a day. Yeah. And yet, yet they kept on. That's how strong delusion is, brother. Amen. God can pour it out. You'd think, why don't they repent? Why do they gnaw their tongues for pain and blaspheme yeah. God? Yeah. Why do they do that? That's because they're so deceived. Amen. They can't do anything else. Now we, have, we have contemporary examples of this. We had 9-11. <clears throat> Thousands of people died. We had the tornado, and yet... Has the population turned to the Lord and no. repented? No, it hasn't. It was sensitive. I've noticed it was sensitive for a while, but uh -huh. it wasn't very long. Yeah, uh -huh. right. It wasn't very long till it kind of... Yes. Now, God took note of that. Yes. You took note of it, but yeah. God took note of that. Amen. God said one time, when he was more favorable toward him, he said he would be he would be to them a little sanctuary in the countries. <laughs> it's Ezekiel eleven sixteen. Well, he told me he wasn't going to be in for it. He wasn't going to be a little sanctuary for them in the countries. But there was a time when they were in the other countries. God was a little God was a little mm -hmm. sanctuary, yeah. uh -huh. but not for, not for these people, not for this generation, not for this generation. Mm -hmm. Trembling and trouble they were going to have. And I, and I won't be for good. I'm going to look for an opportunity to do them evil, not not good, not good. Other versions say, I will not help them. I will not have prosperity they will not have. They will not for ways of good things. I'll not, I'm not going to look for a way to do them something good. See, some people don't think God's capable of doing this. Yeah. Some people don't think that God's capable of saying, I'm not going to, I'm not going to even look for a chance or an opportunity to, to do you good. Mm -hmm. They would think, oh, that's not my God. Well, we don't, we don't argue with you there. Mm -hmm. But that is the God. That's right. Yeah. Amen. And our role is don't get in that position. Yes. Salvation is thoroughly adequate to keep you out of that. Mm -hmm. This salvation of God can keep you out of all these kind of things. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's designed to do so. Make you alert Keep you alert and keep you out of this these provocative stances before God. So does God desire the best for everyone? Well, how can someone postulate such a thing in view of this text? I know. God would have all men to be saved and, and this part they never quote, to come to the knowledge of the truth. They, yes. they somehow drop that off. He said, God wants everybody to be saved. Then they don't, they don't, they don't, and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Because mm -hmm. that's how they're, that's yeah, the means right. by yeah. which they're saved. So they let the heathen go. Don't tell them the truth, because they don't, mm -hmm. they forgot this part of the equation. Yeah. Yeah. In other words, when they, we read things like this, it means that God has provided for a salvation that reaches as far as sin reached. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's thoroughly adequate to save everybody. And if God didn't want to save everybody in this sense, he wouldn't make a salvation that was yes. that capable. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. But see, that accentuates Amen. the seriousness of rejecting it. Mm -hmm. Amen. That makes it all the worse for that to take place. He has provided salvation for all men, but it's contained in a word, yeah. not an action. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
the, the gospel is the power of God and the salvation. If you don't believe this word, there isn't any other way. Should men choose to reject that salvation, they are said to tread underfoot the Son of God and count the blood of the covenant wherewith they were sanctified an unholy thing, and they do despite to the Spirit of grace. Will God overlook those things? No. Indeed, he will not. Amen. And you probably know people that have done this. It appears as though they've done this. The last word will be given by God. I know this. But it's our obligation to notify people. Look, yes. we're not uh, infallible on this matter. We can't infallibly determine who's done this. But we can tell you we've determined not to do it. Amen. We've determined by God's grace we're not going to do this. We're not going to tread the Son of God under our feet. Yeah and stomp all over the Lord Jesus Christ and his will and what he said. We're not going to do it. Amen. And we're not going to count the blood of the covenant wherewith we were sanctified an unholy thing. We're going to remember yeah. that blood of the covenant. Amen. And we're not going to do despite to the spirit of grace. We're going to throw a wet blanket on what the spirit's leading us to do. Now, brethren, we've all got to encourage one another. Let me say that a little better. We all must encourage one another to avoid these revealed mm -hmm. points where God determines to do good, evil and not good. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and believe me, uh, salvation is up to this. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's up to this challenge. Yes. You can uh, you can be in, you can live in safety. Mm -hmm. You yes. can live in safety. Amen. But it will be an alert, mm -hmm. deliberate life. Mm -hmm. It will not be a sleepy, yeah. indolent, lazy kind of life. Yes. Person who lives to avoid this will not will not be slothful. They'll not be forgetful. They'll not be easily drug aside. They'll see, they'll see things coming that other people don't see coming. They'll see relation. I don't like the word relationships, but for one of another one, they'll see relationships that are to be avoided. Yeah, that's right. Connections that are not to be made. Friends that are not to be made. They'll see yeah. Places that they shouldn't go. Mm -hmm. Things they shouldn't expose themselves to. They'll, they'll be alert. Mm -hmm. Why? Because <coughs> sin dulls your conscience. Yes, amen. That's what it does. It dulls your conscience. It dulls your perception. It darkens your eyes. Hardens your heart. Deafens your ear. Sin, that's what sin does. Yes, and every, every time you confess your sin, your vision clears up, your hearing clears up, your heart's made more sensitive. Just, just do it and see if this isn't the truth. Thank God he's given us this uh, Amen. outlet of confession. And if we confess our sins, he's faithful now. He's faithful Amen. and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So what, uh, what a marvelous situation we're in, see? Amen. Israel now was raised up as an example mm -hmm. of where things would be without Christ. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's right. Here's a living example. A lot of good showered on the people, yeah. chosen people, delivered people, given law people, given every kind of advantage, and yet he's not going to raise up another nation to teach us this. That's right. I, think, I think I'll close there. Amen. Yes, sir. You were uh, speaking of this. That's what Jesus did whenever he girded himself <clears throat> about and he washed the uh, disciples' feet. That was like symbolizing this point that we would have this confession, this time that we could be cleansed. That's right. You know, continually. That's why we go to the Lord's table yeah. to, to remember this, that He does this for us now that we're able to, to maintain this clean conscience before That's God. That's right. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah, I can see that just, we touched upon this earlier, but I can see that just, just saying God is love 
which is is tr a true statement. Yes. Doesn't mean it doesn't mean that that everybody benefits from that, mm -hmm. or that everybody true. or that everyone yeah. even perceives it. So there's a lot of imprecise talk about God. Say, say, a lot of people say God is love. What they what they mean is that God loves everybody, or that everybody perceives and enjoys the love of hmm. God. We know that isn't true. Yeah. A person, to illustrate it, it's like someone who's really, really hungry, and there's food all around them, but they can't see it, or they couldn't eat it, or something like, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, there, you can be in such a state where the love of, you don't personally benefit from the love of God. That's right. It's not that God isn't, it's not that God somehow ceases to be loving or something mm -hmm. like that. We know that's not the case. The Lord doesn't change, but you can be in a state where you don't perceive His love mm -hmm. or you don't personally benefit or experience His love. Amen. So the, Amen. the, the key is to be in a position to be in, I don't know if position is a good word, to be in such mm -hmm. a state that mm -hmm. you are able to experience yeah. Yeah. His love and His mercy and His goodness and kindness. Mm -hmm. Amen. Doesn't that put some teeth in Jesus to mark where I am, there will my servant be. Yes. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yeah this is a, you, you said this earlier, that, um, that God brings things up now that we're in Christ in order that we might be forgiven That's for right. it. That's a marvelous, marvelous thing to know. Because, you know, life is, is very spontaneous. Everything about life, real life, is spontaneous. You don't know what's going to happen five minutes from now. And it's designed that way because God is a very present help. So if you're walking in the way, yeah. in the way of life, as things happen, whatever it is, if, if your sins, even if your sins brought up, you can... Repent and, and get a benefit from it, even That's when right. the sin's brought That's up. Right. Now, uh, what about if you just you're just walking in the way and something whatever happens, you can if God's with you because He's a spirit. If He's with you, well then it can be a benefit no matter what it is. Amen. It's an amazing. All that, things are yours. Uh, and, and so you just you just live, do all things heartily as unto the Lord, not unto men, and it'll be a benefit. It'll, you'll actually be blessed. Amen. Mm -hmm. Was reference in verse two to though they climb up into the heavens, that it's to say though they go up into the stars and think they're safe, they'll all bring them down. <laughs> but in the creation account, it, the stars are just a byword, like an oh by the way you might want to know this. Mm -hmm. And a saying that I like I like to say is that he just breathed the stars. That's all he had to do to make the stars. What do you do when you breathe? No, nothing much happens when you breathe, but when God can do that with and make the stars, and all it gets is a by the way He did this. Hmm. So when men men haven't even gotten past the stars, they don't even know if it ends or not. That's how small they are. And when they go up there and say God is not here, it you, you can see the utter disappointment that they might get when the realization hits them. He's everywhere. Yeah. Our God is everywhere, and that does bring the fear of the Lord, but the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Yes, amen. Mm -hmm. Brother, Brother yeah, I want to give an, a scriptural illustration to nail down what I was saying mm -hmm. earlier. This, this verse is probably the most well-known verse in the Bible about the love of God, John 3.16. Yeah. <clears throat> For God so loved the world, He sent His only Son, whosoever believeth in Him will not perish, but have eternal life. Mm -hmm. Two verses later, <laughs> after that verse, mm -hmm. it says, But whoever does not believe is condemned already. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And then in the same at the end of the chapter of chapter three, yeah. in verse 36, 36, it says, Whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God remains on him. So, mm -hmm. there, so there you have these two things juxtaposed. Mm -hmm. You've got the love of God for the world. God so loved the world. But then in the same context, it says, but if you don't believe, you'll never experience that. That's right. Mm -hmm. The only thing that will be left for you is wrath yeah. and condemnation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, it's interesting, isn't it, that in our generation, that's never... People yeah. don't talk about that yeah, yeah. aspect of this. They, uh -huh. they talk as if the love of God is automatically and indiscriminately... Uh, given to everyone, as if everyone benefits from it. 
But yeah. we know that's not true. Yeah. 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 Some people don't even believe in God at all. How yeah. can someone who doesn't even believe in God benefit from the love of God? Mm. It doesn't make any sense at all. No. Amen. 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 Sister Sidney. When you had said, um, you can't hide from God, he, he'll find you out. You also said later, we need Christ so that we can, <coughs> may repent of our sins. Mm -hmm. I thought, when we are baptized, it's not like Jesus is hi hiding our sin from God. God. God would find our sin out if that were true. Mm -hmm. When Jesus died, um, sin, wa sin was punished. And when we were baptized, we were forgiven and our sins were washed away. Yes. Amen. 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 You know, what we heard tonight is a commentary on the fact that God does what he wants to do. And that there's nothing that will frustrate him from uh, accomplishing his purpose. And I was thinking uh, while you're going through this that for those who are unfaithful, if, if there's nothing that can stop God from um, condemning them and from passing judgment, if you're faithful, then there's nowhere you can go and there's nothing that anyone That's can right. do to stop God from blessing them. That's, That's right. right. Amen. Anyone else tonight? Yeah. Sobering text. Yes, it is. Yes. <laughs> and just um, helps you appreciate or makes you appreciate um, the text in the New Testament where we are to exhort each other daily mm -hmm. as we see the day approaching. Amen. We are to That's exhort right. each other daily as we see the day approaching. Yeah. Yes. Lest any of you be hardened. Yeah. Right yeah. Be hardened by um, unbelief. Yeah. And. Uh, this this text, I mean, it's written all the way back in the Old Testament, and this is what the world, cons uh, this is what most people consider the minor prophets. But that does not mean that <laughs> anything they said was Amen. in any wise minor. Yeah. Um, I remember you were talking a long time ago as um, you appreciated the minor prophets or the prophets that aren't don't have a, as much notoriety. Um, because there's these little nuggets that, right, amen. Yeah. that are there for us if we probe deep enough. Amen. And um, that, as you were talking about um, how God visits and there's a point of no return, well, that's, and that spurs us on to exhorting each other uh, on, to, on to holiness and uh, getting away from whatever line that is, mm -hmm. just uh, continually to uh, cleave towards Christ. Amen. 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 Yeah, minor prophet only refers to the size of the book, not the That's right. <laughs> not the importance of what you do. I hope I could say this right. <laughs> but uh, in a sense, humanity sees things in their own time frame or their own perspective. So they think that, well, since I did this, or that I sinned and I didn't immediately get rebuked, or that I didn't immediately get a sign from God saying that I did something wrong, then I must be forgiven, or that He overlooked it, or He yeah, left me, yeah. or something like yeah. that. But in reality, God does things in His own time, in His own righteousness, in His own glorification. And a thought that came to me was that sometimes the reason why God doesn't correct every single sin mankind does is because God gets no glory for correcting people who are spiritually dead. Yeah, not now, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, there's no benefit to yeah. God correcting someone who's just going to go back and do it again. That's right, that's so, right. Uh, those who haven't had the sensitivity for God won't get the rebuke but those who are sensitive to God will most likely, well, as I'm sorry, my words are horrible. Those who are spiritually sensitive will, mo they will receive correction, where those yeah. who are spiritually dead will not receive correction until judgment. Yeah. Amen. The Lord loveth yes. whom the Lord loves, He chases. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. yeah. 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 That's right. I understand what you're saying. All right, we'll have a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for Brother Amos and for his faithfulness. And it has been a stern reminder to us that 
it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And we do, uh, we do not want to provoke thee or do despite to the spirit of grace. We thank you. You've given us the Holy Spirit and faith so that we can work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.